from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. How you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now, here's Wendy. It's time for Hot Topics. Attention everybody, I have an announcement to make. The bazaar is going fabulously, okay? Now you know, I've been, if you watch the after show particularly, but you know I've been, we've been on the air now, seven se seasons, our eighth season starts in September. Uh, that's a lot of clothes, that's a lot of pants and shoes, good ones too. I mean, I got white bottoms, but there are a lot of red bottoms in there too you know, Manolos and whatnot. Um, um, I'm cleaning out my closet and we put everything up on eBay for sale. And yesterday was the first day uh, where the bidding starts. And things are, people, re thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, all of these outfits and more um, are up on eBay for charity. We're giving a percentage of the proceeds to Dress for Success. And, and I must tell you, <laughs> my size has fluctuated over the years, but with stretch, everything, just or, or wear, wear a belt, okay, if you're too thin, okay? Um, and if you're a shoe, then a size 11 or 12. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but go to wendyshow.com and continue to bid. But Wait until after our show today, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I was out last night, so I did not see the debate, but everybody's talking about last night's Republican convention. Well, I've seen the news sound bites and the biggest thing that's glaring in every people's face is how Donald Trump made his grand entrance to We Are The Champions. I equate this to Beyonce's entrance on any given Beyonce day. Like, Beyonce comes out in smoke <laughs> with a silhouette, <laughs> you know? So funny. In my mind, I know he's like, I can't believe I'm pulling this off. <laughs> this was only supposed to be like a two week stunt. I might really be president. <laughs> Melania, get up there and say something. <laughs> so now here she goes. Melania. From a young age, my parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. And Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say and keep your promise. That you treat people with respect, that your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're gonna do. <laughs> that you treat people with dignity and respect. We want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. We want our children and all children in this nation 
to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Okay, so clearly there is some plagiarism going on. And she said, that she told Matt Lauer that she worked on her own speech. This is before the speech was done. In the meet, Matt Lauer, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. um, in the meantime, um, clearly she had a speechwriter. Who wouldn't? Like for as many speeches as each of us have given in life, whether it's speaking to the first grade class or speaking to you know dignitaries or whatever, when you're speaking or being a, a potential first lady, of course you're gonna hire speech writers and they all need to be fired. <laughs> Melania had no idea. <clears throat> You know, Melania had no idea that she was uh, reading Michelle Obama's speech from back in, the, in 2008, right? 2008. And by the way, and I don't mean to bring up race, but we talk about race. Can I just say this as an observation as a black woman? I bet you somebody told Michelle, strip down, put on some chapstick and get out there and be with the people, you know? implying you know, maybe a black thing as well as a thing thing. In the meantime, Malaga is beat for the gods, <laughs> okay? She's got lashes, contouring, you know, the whole bit. A designer dress that was $2,100. Yeah, it's a Roxanda dress. In the meantime, Michelle's dress might have been from like maybe Ross's. No, I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. What I'm saying is that there is a clear difference in who wears what, giving their potential first lady thing. And people are so focused on the words. I was focused on the words, but also the look. Like, cause I was like, Michelle, where, where, where the, oh, I get it. They told you, the man told you to pare down so that you can get in there. But she's paired up now. The Michelle Obama has never looked better in her life today. And then, <clears throat> you know, even with the clothing, I don't recall anybody saying who, who designed uh, Michelle Obama's dress or her brooch. By the way, I didn't bring it out here. It's at home in secret hiding. Do you remember when Melissa Rivers was here? And she was showing me some stuff, like there were two things, one particular a brooch. Somebody secretly here at the show bid it on the brooch and gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> oh, oh yes, oh yes. Look. And I had no idea it was presented in such a weird way. They wrapped it in Joan Rivers and Wendy um, wrapping paper. Like Michael Lee, he's a genius here at the show. He does our set design. He did the wrapping paper and I opened it. I'm like, what is this? Mm. Oh! oh! It's diamonds and sapphires and gold. And it's got, and you know a brooch is good when it's got not one, but two pins in the back. Oh. Yeah, it's, oh, it's pinalicious. Suzanne, did you know that they were getting me that brooch? Yes, I did. How long did you know? I knew a few days. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. the day that Melissa was here, mm -hmm. I was told by the producer of the segment, mm -hmm. don't touch the brooch, mm -hmm. which that's the first thing I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, you, you saw on the TV, mm -hmm. I picked up the brooch, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the brooch, I'm like, oh my gosh, this brooch is mm -hmm. really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I put it down gently, and I had no idea I would be the next owner. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. It's so Upper East Side. <laughs> yeah. If yes. you're in Manhattan, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. <laughs> but back to the ladies. Nobody said whether, uh, you know, whether uh, uh, Michelle is wearing an expensive brooch, an expensive dress, or anything like that. People pointed out that this uh, Melania is wearing a $2,100 uh, uh, outfit. Nobody ever pointed out, though, except for the newspaper I read. We didn't talk about it here on Hot Topics. But Hillary Clinton wore a $12,000 Armani jacket. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I know I want my money back, too. Suzanne is a fool. <laughs> that 
that we love. Yeah, I want my money back too. But here's, here's the thing. You can't really chastise people for wearing ex expensive clothes if you know that they are already about that life. Like, what do you expect Melania to wear? She's a Trump, for goodness sakes. Now, she won't be first lady. She's uncomfortably beautiful. Do you know what I mean? Like, uncomfortably gorge. Sometimes you can be too pretty and price yourself out of the market. Like, like I don't want this as a first lady. Anyway, um, as a side note, Donald has named uh, Omarosa as director of all blacks. Oh yes, oh, oh yes, oh yes. Omarosa is uh, our leader. Uh, she, will be, she will be carousing black people everywhere to vote for Donald. That's a little side note. Let's keep it moving. That's not the real title. I'm sure it's you know, something African-American because that's what people feel comfortable saying these days. I call us black. Oh, oh, excuse me. Thank you for the reminder. African-American Outreach Director. Yes. In other words, Director of Blacks. <laughs> I like a pink pant this time of year. And so for my next bazaar, you'll be able to have them too. Yes. Just saying. Okay, so it's been nearly four years. They were only married for three, but Bethany Frankel is finally officially divorced from Jason. So now she can move on with her life. Thank goodness. In the meantime, during this entire process, Jason is the one who's gotten uglier and uglier, not in terms of looks, he's a very handsome man, but in terms of like, I think that we can agree that we all thought Jason was so dear with those cute parents in Pennsylvania and, and the cute baby Bryn and that Bethany was, you know, the mad dog in the relationship. In the meantime, the longer this has gone on, the uglier Jason's personality has become right down to the point of turning our show up loud and hiding the remote. <laughs> no, that, that's one of my favorite stories. Can I tell it one more time? Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard this story already? No. Perfect, I'm gonna tell it again. <laughs> so, when Bethany was doing her trial talk show that you know, eventually never went anywhere. But when she was doing it, and, and she and Jason were in the house with Bryn, you know, that apartment that they bought together, but they were living together because nobody was moving out, because that would be called, I guess, abandonment or something like that. You know what he'd do? He'd go into the main room with the big TV. There's always a main room with a big TV. Every TV in your house is not the same size, correct? Yes. All right, there's always a main room with a big TV. So he'd go in there, and turn on the Wendy show. No, 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 no. And turn it up loud and then hide the remote. <laughs> How do I know this? I read this in the newspaper. Yeah. That's so crazy, because all you have to do is walk to the side of the TV and turn it off, <laughs> or down, or whatever. Anyway, um, guess how Bethany celebrated finally being divorced from him? She returned to the scene of the crime. Yeah, the Four Seasons. That's where they got married. Do you remember she urinated in a champagne um, glass, or a bucket, or something? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember? Well, I do too. <laughs> When a girl's gotta go, a girl's gotta go. Anyway, um, that's where they got married. Reportedly, she tore up the divorce papers and threw them in the pool, which is an indoor pool in the middle of everything. In the meantime, at the bottom of the pool, there's all kind of, because people have been partying there because this Four Seasons is about to close. I've never been to this Four Seasons. I don't even know what that is. I do know that I love a Four Seasons hotel, though. Oh, the Caesar salad is fabulous. <laughs> 
And if you're an anchovy person like me, then you'll understand what I'm about to say. The white anchovies are better than the brown ones. And if you really love an anchovy, you don't even need uh, accoutrements. If you, you just take it like this and... <laughs> oh yeah, oh yes. As long as you don't look them in the eye because they're, they're really ugly. And sometimes they have hair. So you'll need your dental floss. But the point I'm making, other than the Caesar salad, is that, um, wait, who jumped in the pool and got cut? Our friend Beth Shack, the poker player. Yes! Okay, I've got this friend, Beth Shack, and she plays poker. Oh, no, she plays poker like a guy, like she's made millions off poker. So she jumps in the pool, separate and apart from Bethany, and gets cut by all the champagne glasses. Yeah, because people come in here, they're going wild, and they know that the place is about to close. Like, the Four Seasons is about to close. So Beth cut her foot, so Beth's blood is in the pool, <laughs> broken champagne bottles, and uh, Bethany's divorce paper. Thank you. Yeah. A mess. <laughs> Is it wrong to have a baby when you're, how old? 72, 72 years old. Oops. If you're Mick Jagger and you can afford it. If your girlfriend's only 29 and, she, and your name is Melanie and she wants a baby. Well, there's a 43 year age difference and I feel like this is wrong on so many levels on one hand. Because most people just, look, all right, first of all, his oldest kid, Mick, 45 years old. He's also a great grandfather. Now, uh, you know, if you follow what doctors say, yeah, we women, we get the pause and everything dries and we can't, and we can't have children. Well, guess what men get? Men get kids that come out with, I'm not saying Down syndrome, but you know what the doctors say. When, when you have old sperm, things happen. And that's all I'm gonna say. Any doctor will tell you. When this new kid graduates from high school, Mick is gonna be 91. Well, who's lifting the microwave into the dorm room? Cause that's what my dad did. You know what I mean? And, you know, in our Hot Topics meeting, we've got some very cold, callous people here Aww. at Wendy. <laughs> oh, please, please. They're like, but he's got the money to pay for somebody to throw a ball and to lift the microwave. And I'm like, <laughs> by the way, these are all people who aren't parents Aww. talking like that. You know, at, at 91 years old, I just feel as though it's very unfair to the boy or girl <laughs> to be having a baby. I do. <clears throat> and no matter how many nursemaids you have for the baby, and yourself, <laughs> uh, your 29-year-old wife is, um, she, she's going to be raising this baby basically as a single parent because Mick spends most of his time on tour and the other part of the time when he comes home, in my mind, he's icing his back. <laughs> so she's a ballet dancer. So, oh yes, and I, I checked, oh, fancy title, no money. <laughs> there are a lot of jobs like that. You know where you get a big title but no money? The average salary of a ballet dancer is around $1,200 a week. It's okay, because Mick is worth uh, $360 million. Wow. But still, you all, put it in perspective. Is it fair for him to have an eighth child? No. Is it fair for this girl to have no children if she's in love? No. So what do they do? I don't know. <laughs> it's only a one hour show. I got more stories to get to. <laughs> In the meantime, I don't know whether I'm a size 11 or size 12. Why are my shoes always slipping off my feet? They're, they're always fitting like flip-flops. 
Yeah. Anyway, so Calvin, Calvin Harris has moved on uh, from Taylor Swift. <laughs> well, reportedly, he's dating that singer, Tinashe. You know her, she had that one song that we know. My son thinks that she and Eve are the two most beautiful women in the world. Aww. Oh yes, oh yes. And she's a beautiful girl. But like I said, I can't remember the song, but it was that one song, we all knew the words to it. Um, anyway, so Calvin and uh, Tanache have worked together before, back in 2014. And he just got out of his relationship with Taylor. So. If this is a real relationship, which I don't believe every time you see a man with a woman, it's a relationship. I don't know why we, the newspapers, the blogs, why do we always just assume everybody's smushing? Sometimes people are just collaborating. Do you know that tanache has been here not once, but, but twice? Okay, well the first time she was here was, um, her song was called Two On. How'd it go? Two On. I love to get to, oh, I'm somebody's mom, so I have, you know, I know the words, I don't know the title. I love to get to on, and so she did that song. But I didn't realize, yeah, oh yes, Th that's when she performed, remember? Yes, Tanache. In the meantime, she was here before that in 2009. Okay, you want me to, to, to bring you back? She was with a girl group named The Stunners, and she was a background Stunner, or one of the stunners, or <laughs> something. Uh, do I think this is a real relationship? No. You know, maybe the smushing room once or twice. They're working together on music. She hasn't had anything out since two on. And so, good for, good for her. Yeah. Okay. We've got more great show for you, everyone. Legendary supermodel Pat Cleveland is here, but up next, Erica Vitrini is coming out with the inside scoop on whether Kanye and Kim broke the law. Plus, Donald Trump's ghostwriter is speaking out, and you won't believe what he has to say about Donald. Keep it here.